Level two defense is more intense. And you're going to have to know how to play level two defense because let's say you're covering a score and you're here and this player is much quicker than you even though you need to have good athleticism. Do you want this player getting the ball in their hands if they're much quicker than you? No. Because the dilemma you run into is now you have to react to what that player wants to do, don't you? What you would rather have happen is have that player react to what you want them to do. So now you've got to turn your effort up a notch. You have to deny the ball. You have to put a hand out here on this guy's hip and hold him so they can't go back door. Is that holding? Yes. If you get caught. You can't grab somebody's shirt, but you can put a hand with your palm open on their hip when they want to go this way, stop their progress, and change your position. We'll talk about that when we get on the floor on defense. That takes some mental toughness. You have to be physically and mentally aggressive to play level two defense. Level two defense is when you attack your offensive opponent. You deny the ball. If your opponent catches the ball on the perimeter, that means you lock your feet in on both sides so that their feet are here. And you climb right in and you find out what kind of gum they're chewing. That's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? because it takes you out of your comfort zone. Most people, when they communicate and they have a day-to-day -day conversation, aren't doing it like this. How's your day going? Good. <laughs> right? A little out of your comfort zone. That's what level two defense is. Now, I'll tell you one of the great secrets of defense of all time. When you're on the perimeter and you're playing a quicker player, and I learned this the hard way. Most of the things I've learned I've learned through embarrassment the hard way. You're playing a quicker player, but you want to play defense on them. Lock them in. Make them give the ball up. They're either going to pivot away. So if I'm here, I'm either going to pivot away or I'm going to try to drive by you, but because you have my feet locked in, I'm going to have a heck of a time trying to turn the corner. See what I'm saying? Lock in and, hey! and startle them because it just shakes them up. Nobody plays pickup games in practice and hey! And you're right there all the time. Doesn't happen too often, does it? Play level two defense and attack your opponent. That's how you do it. That will neutralize a quicker player. But you have to put on your, uh, your armor and you have to go after it because that's what it's going to take. So we're talking about a person that has some mental toughness to him. We're talking about level two defense, which means you attack your opponent, not just contain them. That's an unusual concept for a defensive player, isn't it? <laughs> that you set the pace. You want them to react to you. You do not want to have to react to them, especially if they're quicker. We're talking about ball denial. We're talking about denying the cuts. We're talking about belly-up defense when the offensive player receives the ball. We're talking about boxing out in every situation. These are all critical to taking away the rhythm and the comfort zone of your opponent. On defense, you must be physically strong, even if you're not physically big. You can become stronger just by getting in the weight room. Doing push-ups, multiple, multiple push-ups and sit-ups at night will help you even. But you can get stronger, even if you can't get a lot bigger right away, by getting in the weight room. A study was done at Iowa State University about 10 years ago on strength training. Put their basketball program for the first time into a strength training program. Every player, on average, increased in three weeks' time 25% in strength. Did they increase 25% in size? No, but their physical strength increased 25%. Can that be a value? Sure it can. You have to take advantage of it. And of course, on defense, hold your opponent under their normal scoring average, points per game. Talked about that a little bit earlier with the shooting guards, didn't we? That should be a general rule for every playing position, don't you think? Especially true here. You take their most versatile guy away. Now, here's a good thing to know. 
and you ought to write this down. When you're playing defense, there's something you have to understand. Where the mind goes, the body will follow. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you can get to the point that you play level two defense, and you get inside the offensive player's head, you get inside their minds, their bodies will follow. And you'll see it happen on the court. I've seen a lot of players that were better players than me, but because I could play level two defense, I could deny the ball. They'd move without the ball for the first quarter, the first half. They'd realize they weren't getting the ball. Boom. And they'd start standing. Second half, my job was easy. So far in the guy's head that it made it easier for me to score. You know why? When he went down on the defensive end, what was he thinking about? He wasn't getting his shots, right? Where the mind goes, the body will follow. Everything always starts with defense. Red Arback, the most successful NBA coach of all time with nine NBA championships, said the following, defense is just hard work. There will be nights when your shots won't fall, but you can play defense every night. The responsibilities of a small forward in rebounding at the defensive end are to make sure that you always go find the offensive player and make contact. Do not allow the offensive player to come to you. As an offensive rebounder, you must make sure that you don't allow the defensive player to make contact with you first. You need to try and get even or by them to put yourself in position to get an offensive rebound. A small forward should, a should average seven to ten rebounds per game. That means you're being aggressive. What do you have to do to average seven to ten rebounds a game? Don't you have to get at least three offensive rebounds to do that? A good small forward will get seven to ten rebounds a game. You go back and you look at some of the better small forwards in the game, including Pippen and Jordan. Did you ever see them get 15 rebounds a game? They're always right around seven, eight, nine rebounds a game, aren't they? That's where you have to be. That means you've got to be pulling down three offensive boards on average per game, which in turn gives your team three offensive possessions. It helps them to be more effective. You have to be able to rebound both ends of the floor. Goes a little bit along with number one, but it's critical that you don't take off on defense and fill the lanes until the rebound is secured. It's critical, because your guy will pick you apart if you do. And it's critical you do go to the offensive boards. Under no circumstances are you to give up offensive rebounds. It's a cardinal sin of defense. What happens when you box somebody out and they're over-aggressive? Go over the back. Go over the back. You get a foul call. You have to put a body on somebody. And to do that, you have to be physically strong when you're playing against another three.